Hey guys, this is Mario. We reached a guide marker for Tanigan's Protoss on the stream at twitch.tv slash HTO Mario. And so we've gone ahead and made the guide he requested, which is for Terran against Protoss with a focus on Thor. Now one of the things we were able to do on this guide is get feedback from Party. This is the real Party. Well, um, I did some research and contacted some Korean friends, including MOI Bloom, who confirmed that this was the real Party. Once we got the build order down, we went ahead and tested it on the ladder, and one of the people that we got to test it against was Root Minigun. He's an exceptional player, and despite going the counter to Mech, which is Carrier, we were able to defeat him as well. After Minigun, we proceeded to try our build in the WCS to make sure that it could work in under any situation, and it was able to hold off cheese quite well. All we needed to do was, uh, you know, scout accordingly and react to the guy. So let's there are two variations you can do, and I've included a replay for either one you guys would like. But we're going to focus on the gas first. It is a superior one if you're pretty good at multitasking. Overall, I think it is a better one, but um, some of it requires on your multitasking as well because you do have to be able to do some sort of aggression for it. A great build will always allow you to harass and expand and lead yourself into the macro game. Although your expansion isn't as early as you would probably like it. There are many things that you can do to speed it up by cutting aggression, but you do want some aggression, so I think this guide is something that um, we added for it. This is something we added to the guide for that. Now, Parting told me that one of the best ways to play is a specific strategy. I believe this was used by either 4GG in WCS or Mario in the GSL first. So this is not my opening. The only thing we added was took bits and pieces from Terran against Protoss that's been going all over and then adding our own information to it. So this is not entirely my own guide, and I do not take full credit for it. Only parts of it are mine, like when we transition, how we transition, and some of the units that we make so that we can adjust ourselves for a safe mech play. At about 10 supply, we want to drop a supply depot. You want to drop the supply depot next to the gas geyser. The reason for this is because you want this gas geyser rather fast. And I apologize for my voice, guys. I'm, I'm a bit sick. So we want this gas geyser quite fast, although we normally do want to wall off at the front. This isn't something that we're doing because of how important the gas is. Once the supply depot is finished, we'll go ahead and get the gas geyser right away. One way that you can compensate for this on the ladder is to veto any two-player maps. If you're not on a two-player map, the opponent cannot just cheese you right outside your base with a proxy or in your base with a proxy gateway. This will help compensate for the supply depot not being in the front. This is also, however, a preference or a choice that you can have. Once the gas geyser has begun producing, we are going to go ahead and get um, a barracks. The barracks will be at 13 supply. It isn't until you get to about 140 minerals that you want to pull the bear, the SUV for the barracks and then rally the first SUV to come out after you plant the barracks, and the barracks and only put one more from the mineral line on the gas geyser. This gets your economy flowing rather nicely. Scouting will become what will be coming a little bit later in the game. As for this specific build, the only thing that's important is if he has a nexus or not. Most of uh, most of everything will line up for some proper aggression. Go ahead and micro your workers, and once you reach 16 supply, that's the last SCV you will make until your barracks has completed. The reason for this being is that you cannot fit in an extra SCV in time for your factory. So you can see that we started out of habit, but we went ahead and canceled it. Once your barracks is complete, make sure you get the orbital command first, then the factory, then the barracks, and then your scout. The scout doesn't have to be that early because we're not, we, we can't see anything that we need to identify if we're going to be able to do um, aggression early or not until we actually scout and see if there's a command sent or an XI. Once the first marine comes out, we go ahead and drop a reactor. Okay. The reactor is so that we can produce more marines at a time for the aggression or for the defense. It's very important to get this reactor. Scouting out his base, the first thing we kind of want to know is there is there a next side by 4 minutes. It's a very important factor. The opponent isn't in this location, so we're going to the next. Once the factory is complete, we start the starport, and then we start a Hellion. The Hellion, you can kind of start before the starport. 
An important part of this build is the supply depots. You will notice that you will get supply de de uh, blocked very often. You'll have to cut an SCV here or there to make sure that you can produce out of, out of all the units. This is fine. It's a very tight build order. Um, I believe that you build the supply depot at about 17 supply. We'll go ahead and double check. So 16, Marine, and now there should be a supply depot. Upgrade. There we go. So we could have gone a little bit sooner according to our minerals. So once we start the reactor, go ahead and start the supply depot. We'll just fast forward a little bit. There we go. We begin marine production, so we'll be making a marine hellion and then soon a medifact. Once the supply depot finishes, we have to start the other one immediately. The reason for this being is we're actually spending quite a bit amount of uh, unit supply with the two marines, the SCV, and the hellions that we're producing. So you can see that we actually are slightly supply blocked and then we get it just in time and we have to immediately make another supply depot. We scout the enemy base, and we see, you know, we're not that interested in this. This is what we're interested in. Making sure his next eye is on time. By five minutes, it should be almost complete. It should be at least three-fourths of the way there. If it's not, then you know that it's late in his attack, and then you have to scan his base, so be very careful on what you follow it up with. When they go for an early next eye like this, they have several choices. They can do a warp gate follow-up, a robotics follow-up, or a stargate follow-up. Sometimes they can do a twilight uh, follow-up. When they go twilight, it's most likely blink or dark templar. If it's blink, you simply produce widow mines for two here on the map, or not that close. So when they blink up, it fires, and two bunkers at the front. And then once the bunkers are filled, you keep most of your army in the middle with siege tanks planted strategically and marine medevac to move around the bases. The marines you want to keep close to your base. The hellions, they're fine. You can use them to scout out across the map. They're not something important. It doesn't matter if your opponent sees this coming. As long as your ex execution is correct, it shouldn't be a problem. The reason why your marines stay back is because they cannot reach the enemy's opponent, or uh, the opponent's base on time, with the medevac popping out in the last two marines. Again, another supply depot fairly quick. This one is at 36 supply. We will have a detailed guide for the build order down below. We go ahead and medevac boost across the map, and then we send the Hellions to the front. So when this goes on, you have a choice. You can either go for an expansion once your first medevac is left, or you can go ahead and go for defense. I'm a really big fan of the expansion. This makes it easier to do a follow-up. So while we go across the map, we go ahead and drop an expo after we produce a widow mine and a viking. The reason these two are at this specific timing is that if they if their command or the next side was on time and it is finished by about five minutes and twenty seconds, then we know that the only follow up that could really do severe damage is either a Dark Templar or a Stargate opener. So what we do is we go ahead and get a widow mine in our mineral line for the Stargate if it's Oracle, and then a, a Viking to help assist. You know, if the Oracle is just camping the edges, we can chase it away. These are meant to thwart ward prisms or, or Oracles or help remove Phoenix from the equation. With Marines, we have three sources of anti air producing right now. Before you start the attack, make sure that you start the command center. This is very important. That way, while the attack is going on, it's already going in progress. Set the rally. Keep producing units. And go ahead and drop in the middle ground. We want to drop on the middle ground as it's very important that we do not get in the mineral line of the main base. We want to skirt the edge as much as we can and bait out the overcharge. Here's the widow mine. And here's the attack. Now since we are skirting the edge and we're attacking, he's gone ahead and popped his nexus overcharge. As you can see, we just move away from the dotted line and we just hop down below. Once the opponent has popped the overcharge on the main base, we can move down to the natural. 
The goal isn't to kill workers, however it definitely helps. The actual goal is to reduce his unit counts as well as we can without losing the maturity of our own. This makes it difficult for him to do a counterattack. Once his units are gone and we're trading efficiently, then we can go ahead and snipe some of the workers that he's either most likely going to pull, or um, you know, defense um, the workers that he's either most likely going to pull, or that once we've killed the units because he didn't pull some workers, we're going to go ahead and be able to get some. You can use pot shots from your hellions to kill out like four or five at a time, and then go back to the fight with them. But ultimately, your goal is to help keep the units busy while you go ahead and take up back home and then take minor shots as, you know, whenever you can see the opportunity available to you. Oh, sorry, the microphone wasn't on. If your opponent doesn't have a lot of stalkers, normally they have at least three. It's probably some tech, so we want to scout out his space, and we see two gateways and a robotics. You know, you can spend the scan if you want, but it's a little bit dangerous for Dark Templar. So usually, your initial poke, you kind of want to be able to see the tech. That's why you're kind of, another reason you're kind of poking in the base and moving down to the low ground. So with what we saw here, the robotics, and the forge, and the two gateways, and the cannons, we knew he couldn't have much else. Uh, another dead giveaway is the amount of stalkers and the sentries he has. He should have at least like two or three stalkers, and if he only has two, there should be a sentry. So we're just trying to fight away from the cannon, do a little bit of damage here as much as we can. You know, kind of grab at the stalker in just a second. But back home, once that you know, once we have our initial units and a few marines and. We got the Hellion and the Viking here, just in case. So pretty much after you get the Hellion and the Viking and your command center is down, uh, your last team marine should be about to pop out. And at that stage, you can go ahead and drop two tech labs and a gas guy. Back on the aggression, we're going. We're about to lose everything, so we just have to be careful and get out of there if we can. Save what you can. Don't lose too much. Unfortunately, we lost the meta pack. He didn't have the boost. Uh, we've lost a hundred more minerals than our opponent, which is unfortunate. We've lost more units, but his were more expensive. So what we actually did in this game is, if you open it up, is we've kind of secured our expansion. We've got a lot of tech. We're producing siege tanks, banshees, and marines at the same time. We're on two gas, and our opponent has spent a lot on defense just because of the way we open. So this is 300 minerals. This is 300 minerals that he can't get back. So in actual reality, he spent more than us, and he hasn't been able to chrono boost out workers because of our aggression. Since the mule is about four harvesters, you know we're actually about to be ahead. Uh, we're even right now. We're leading by one SCV because of the mule. But once this one finishes, we'll actually be in a better place than our opponent. You don't want to lose every single unit if you can help it. Uh, you want to do as much damage as you can, but you are able to trade. So as long as it's not for free and you're trading evenly, since you know we were basically doing that, then it's fine. The counterattack won't kill you. But if you're not trading evenly, the counterattack can cause a massive threat. And if you know that it's not Stargate, you can go ahead and use the Riddle Mine at the front. So here he comes in for the attack. We see that he's trying to, so we burrow the Widow Mine. We knew that it wasn't going to be an Oracle. We try to stop it from detonating on the worker, but he goes ahead and gets it. Supply depots whenever you need them. We'll have a, a written down a lot of time for when you need the depots. The Viking can be landed in this specific scenario because he doesn't have any air. And the Viking actually does quite a bit of damage to stalkers. Here comes the siege tank, which also does a massive amount of damage to stalkers. Micro back the weak units, and there's the Banshee. Another supply depot, but then we go into the command center. So you can see that we've been making uh, supply depots on a regular basis. We kind of have a little bit of excess, but that's fine. The build supports it. And um, the reason why you want that is once you start throwing on production structures, you know, as long as you can afford a supply depot, but you can't afford more production structures and you have a few extra minerals, you can drop supply depots to make sure that you never forget them. It's more important to build them in advance than to forget them, because forgetting them will limit how many units you have. Building them in advance, as long as it's not too many at a time, won't really hinder that. 
it may hinder your production capabilities like your facilities but not your actual units as long as you don't build too many so between the banshees and the siege tank and the marines we're able to hold off almost anything you know the vikings definitely able to help we kill off the observer but we go back home once the command center is building usually about halfway you want to make sure that you already have your gas geysers. So, I mean, once the command center starts, you drop the gas geysers. And then once you have an excess amount of gas, you can skip a banshee for it if you really want to. You drop two armories. This is a very important. Our uh, upgrades are a very important aspect of this game. However, what you can do is trade the upgrades for two more factories. If you sense that there's more aggression coming, instead of the armories first, you get the factories first. You just swap the two timings. If you feel like the opponent is going to play passive, then you get the upgrades first. So it really depends on how much they are focusing on upgrades is how much you're going to be focusing on upgrades. Because we don't need an equal footing, but it's nice. It allows us to be more cost efficient. We simply merge this over, and then we'll, but when the armories are about to be done, we go ahead and drop our second factory. Usually this is when the orbital command is finishing up, so that we can use the excess minerals from the orbital command to help further supply the Hellion count. We start our 1-1 upgrades, and the opponent has their 1-1 almost done, but that's fine. With mech, you can be an upgrade or two behind. It definitely hurts the, the marines in the beginning when the opponent gets early armor upgrades, which is why we can't stay on them for too long. We did get a single missile turret in our main, just in case there was some hidden Stargate tech that we weren't sure of, but we didn't get in our, any in our natural. We are getting one at the front, however, in case of Dark Templar, where he would switch into that uh, scenario. Normally, if you do this, though, and it's, if it's like a one base, you want the engineering bay, at your front by seven, or not the engineering bay, the missile turret at your front by seven minutes because at seven minutes of VT you can walk in, or you should be saving a scan. There's many different timings you can do, but we'll go more into the one base timings after we've gone ahead and gone into the build. You can swap the add-ons, or you can use the the barracks to make a tech lab and then swap the add-ons. But in this case, since we are having a nice mineral supply, we're gonna go ahead and begin the Thor Hellbat production almost right away with the blue flame. If you wait for this factory to swap the add-ons and you know use the barracks to make a tech lab first and then a reactor or uh, so forth, you know you just keep pumping out a few extra marines, and then you make the the tech lab like right about now, and then you swap the add-ons. So you'll have a few more marines, which will help you against blank stalkers. But since our opponent is going kind of zealot heavy, you want the hell bats earlier. So if he's not making zealots early on, marines are a great defense. If he is making zealots early on, you want the hell bat and blue flame hurt earlier on in the game. Getting our gas geysers, our third is fairly fast established, you know, once once we have the upgrades going and we have a good amount of units, we can go ahead and grab our third. We don't have to be that concerned unless he's being hyper-aggressive. Uh, a missile turret, just in case of a Dark Templar, you know, just a tiny supply depot. Now once you swap these two over, you should have two barracks, or two factories with tech labs, one with a reactor and one uh, starport with a tech lab, and you immediately make your your barracks tech lab and then you drop a ghost academy right away. This is kind of the um, unit producing structures you'll stay with for uh, most of your three bigs. Because that with the upgrades and the Thors, you know you're investing a lot into gas, which is kind of why you want the earlier third. Before you start your ghost academy, you should have a third base. Now you can be aggressive on the map if you feel confident. Um, this isn't the best idea if he's got a lot of zealots, but since he had so little anti-air, we decided to go for it. We knew we would be trading our ground army, um, but you know we do siege a while away from the planetary fortress and kind of poke at where we can. So once you have your first forward, you can do a poke. Don't be too afraid as long as your macro was going great. You know you should be in a good position to do it because you should have one one in blue flame. So his zealots should die rather fast. And then if he's got like Blink Stalker, the Banshees and Siege Tank and the Thor do a massive amount of damage to it. Banshees with 1-1 one, one are stronger than Stalker's 1-1, one, one, you know, for, on equal numbers. And you got 5 right here, and 5 Siege Tanks and a Thor and a lot of Marines and Hellbats to tank the shots, because if he blinks under, the Hellbats will do massive amount of damage to the Stalkers. But back at the base, you know, we're getting our plus 2 underway, we're beginning Ghost Production, 2 Thors at a time, 2 Hellbats. 
So we're in a pretty good uh, spot. He does try to engage this, but since he doesn't have a lot of anti-air, we go ahead and kill almost everything. Just taking some picks at his Colossi. We're not worried about Zealots at all. In fact, the more Zealots he has when we have Hellbats, the better. It'll just be a flat-out domination. So we kind of poke back over here to make sure that we can grab what we want, but uh, we, we did get rid of his anti-air and our banshees were weak, so we retreated. Now once your third base is up and running, you want it to be about 16 mining and 3 in each gas. We can go ahead and drop two more unit producing structures. Now uh, that's when we go up to five factories, not until your third is pretty highly saturated. And that way you can afford it along with your 3-3 timing in just a second, but also a third base or a fourth base. So once this is, you know, maxed out, then we go ahead and stop uh, building SEVs. We can rally some from the main over here, so we're kind of oversaturated, but then we'll be transferring them to our new third base. So you don't really want to go over three mining bases with, with SEVs and gas. You can get a fourth base with very few workers and only the gas geysers. It'll be mostly a muling base and you can take some from your natural, you know, so your natural doesn't mine out as fast. Now the add-ons on the other two factories aren't nearly as important. You can go ahead and just make hellbats from them if you know that the timing attack is probably coming. In this situation we double expanded because we're fairly confident that we have a massive lead, but usually you just want to take one expansion. Now the reason why you don't need more Thor production uh, structures is because you actually are pretty gas starved at this stage. You're getting your 3-3, your ghost, your, uh, two Thors at a time, and a Banshee, or Vikings, or a Raven. So, you know, whichever one you prefer, but the Banshee is the superior one at this time, unless he's opened up with a Stargate. And you kind of want, like, Thor, Hellbat, Viking. Uh, very few Banshees. And uh, the Hellbat is... Uh, more supply efficient than the Thor. It's not nearly as strong, but you need a lot of Hellbats to tank damage. So if he's got a shit ton of Immortals, you want a shit ton of Hellbats. But if he's got a shit ton of Archons, you want a shit ton of Thors. Um, or Ghosts. You know, and you have an even mix between the others, because then the Archons will melt rather fast. But these add-ons, you don't really need them until you're on four bases. And at this stage, you, sh you should be almost maxed out. Uh, the extra Hellbats really are for a, a much bigger buffer and to help you, you know, uh, push up to 200 a lot faster. Once you reach 3-3, you can do another attack, you can be a little bit defensive, but ultimately your goal is to get up to about, I want to say 15 Ghosts at the most, and you can also throw in some Ravens, uh, one at a time. You know, you can get the Corvid Reactor and then, and then start Ravens once it's about 50 seconds in. And what that will do is your ravens will start coming in with uh, you know, enough energy for a Hunter Seeker missile. And you can go up to 15 ravens and 15 ghosts and have a very powerful army. So he goes ahead and kills this base. It was a mistake that we couldn't lift it. You know, we, uh, we weren't quite paying attention there. But we do have this one, so that's one benefit to expanding in opposite directions. And our opponent isn't quite maxed out yet, but here he comes. We EMP his zealots. And they melt after the MP to the Hellbats. They melt insanely fast. So he lost about 60 supply and we lost like 10, 15. Because of how powerful the Hellbats are against the Zealots. So that's your build order. Uh, once we were on four bases, we went ahead and got another tech lab and another reactor. So we can produce three Thors at a time and four Hellbats. Uh, ghosts and Ravens or Banshees, depending whatever we're in the mood for go ahead and go for the attack and that kind of closes out the game so in a second we're just going to go ahead and focus on some of the possibilities that we can also do based on uh, what kind of cheese or all in we scout and that's game lots of army so what we can do in the early game if we scout cheese you know how can we respond to cheese so let's say that we've got all these unit producing structures and we scout out in space we find out that it's like one base dark imply well it's rather simple you just get a gas geyser an engineering bait and you know you can go for a raven but what if it's blink well you get one or two widow mines or siege tanks and um you don't want more than two widow mines, you plant them up top, maybe a bunker here, and then you put siege tanks back here. So you want to be keep your siege tanks far from the ledge and your widow mines a little bit so when they blink in they take a lot of damage. And your core unit will be like marine siege tank medifac. So 
let's say, you know, down the list, let's say they go for like an immortal sentry bust. You know, you just get two bunkers at the front, marine, siege tank, metafac. Um, one base blank stalker, marine, siege tank, metafac. What if they go for Stargate? Like, you know, you get two red on mines, one or two, and then you go for Marion's Huge Tank Meta back. Um, and another way that you can counter Stargate play is you can also go for like Marine Thor Meta back or Marine's Huge Tank Viking after you have one or two Meta packs. You don't need more than two Meta packs. So those are just some of the unit compositions you can do. Ultimately, if they don't have an expansion and they don't look like have si they have signs of it, get a second gas geyser, an engineering bay, and a wall off. Put a, a bunker in the middle, another bunker behind it, and then put your widow mines wherever they're going to try to blink up. So if you have your, like, your tanks here and two bunkers here, clearly blinking up here will be a problem for them. So you put your widow mines like right here. So if he blinks up, he blinks into widow mines. You should always have one widow mine. Um, you know, usually building or a Hellion, and you can use your Hellions to scout out the map and scout out their base and be sure you can kind of use it like a Reaper as the scout. So that is your build. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.